Hey, Shin Gojira! So your new movie's coming out, and I just want to congratulate you on a job well done. Put her there. Haha, <sighs> very funny. Just like everybody else. Just keep making fun of my small arms. Cause that's the most original thing nowadays. What next? You're gonna make fun of the fact that my skin looks like... BEGIN! Hey, man, just welcome to Super Important Views. My name's Steve. I'm Jessica. And today we're going over the Bandai Vinyl Godzilla 2016, or you may know as Shin Goji. Godzilla Resurgence, he's Baconzilla, and we love him. So this is a figure we recently acquired at G-Fest. I had my pre-order, but they had him at the convention, so I just decided to uh, snag the big bad boy up right there so I can get this review freaking out of there. And I also want to bring up uh, how some of the videos are going to be coming out for the next few weeks because we got a lot of things that I kind of want to go over. So uh, we're putting him out, and then I mentioned I was going to do the Rebirth of Malthras over on the Geek Chess. I'm still going to try to get those out this week, but GMK is just shipping. He'll, he'll probably be here by the end of the week, so I want to try to get him out by the, hopefully beginning of the weekend. And then we've had some requests for Monsters with Mecha Godzilla and Little God, the Little Godzilla, Godzilla Jr. and King Ghidorah. I'm going to, I was going to put out the Juniors, but now I'm actually going to put out Mecha Godzilla because I recently got Garuda, so I can actually do both of those in just one video for you guys. So I thought that'd be really cool. And then, uh, try to get the other two out. Sometime in the near future. And then we also had requests for some Godzilla Island figures, which at G-Fest, I finally completed the collection. So I'm actually going to push those back to uh, our 7,000 subscriber video. It will be all the Godzilla Island figures in one shot. That will be a fun long video because i got a, quite a few figures I actually really want to go over that I got from the convention for you guys. So we're going to start with this guy right here because the movie is going to be coming out at the end of the month. Can't freaking wait because I think he actually looks super cool. But well, let's see if the vinyl looks cool. So without further ado, for his packaging, comes with a sweet tag where we have right here, we got the semblance of Shin Goji from the film, Godzilla 2016 on the bottom, copyrights, which, is that 62 Godzilla? <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that is 62 Godzilla on the bottom of there. And on the back, we just got some Godzilla dorsal spines, and on the inside, just some other information that I can't really understand. Maybe some legal mumbo jumbo somewhere in there. So let's get him up and up out of his uh tag. We're not <laughs> taking the tag off. What are we doing? No. We're not taking it off. No. Pretty sure I'm gonna. No. Take it off. Ah, yeah. oh, there we go. And I even got a little sleeve to put this in. <laughs> Where's my food, mama bird? Rawr. <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about the beginning of the trailer where he's like, because uh, I think Rodan might be officially confirmed, but it just, just could be me. But so we're going to get into a closer look at his details, which for his head sculpt is actually pretty gnarly if my camera would actually focus on it. Looks really good overall. Really like how they did the eyes where they're just kind of glossed over, just like you would see for the GMK Godzilla. He's got some very nice bone coloring here for his teeth. You can kind of see the inside of his mouth has a little bit of detail on there. Which uh, I'll try to lift it open just a little bit. Maybe. maybe. Don't even try. I'm working on it. Right there you can see a little bit of the details on the inside. Because this Godzilla doesn't actually have a ton. Or at least from what we've seen from the trailers and other figures. He's just kind of got that good old kind of puppet face. Well, it looks more like a... Like the inside of a croc doesn't really have too much of a tongue, but it's kind of like a tongue-like. Yeah, I would imagine like the bottom of the texture is, but then again, there's been like rumors that he absorbs things, and I don't even know anymore. Mm. But the detail is really cool, though, where they think they capture the look of it pretty well. Because there's usually like enough on the figures, especially out of the newer ones. They're not quite as detailed as some of the more older Bandai vinyls, but like with the, uh, the Mudo that we did a little while back. Well, this guy actually has some very nice wrinkling around his face. Looks really good. Because the skin for him definitely looks like it's been through the microwave. Maybe been on the skillet for a little too long. Which I think is actually a really nice appearance for him. Especially since it's supposed to be a little bit more of a terrifying Godzilla. And he's supposed to look like he got hit by a nuke. And this guy definitely does. And for his eyes, especially since they are glossed over. One thing I will point out, at least on mine. One eye, you can see there definitely has a lot more pain on it than the other one. So looking at it from the front kind of throws you off a little bit. But you can see his uh, little nose there. He's got a little bit of a brow. And then coming to the back where he starts seeing his dorsal spines. They come on the back where a lot of his color scheme is in this very nice dark charcoal gray. But he has a lot of blood red painted out throughout the entirety of his back spine. 
as you can see here. So he has that kind of like nice burning gods little glow to him. Kind of looks like, you know, like how lava is. Yeah, where it kind of has like that. What she's talking about is like the lava flow with the rocks where like the top of the rock is that like dark ch charcoal color. And then you can still see the magma throughout, it, which uh, looks really cool on the back here. It gives a lot of detail because you even see it here on the front as well on his chest. <clears throat> he has a lot of that paint kind of splashed throughout. And even though some of it is not the cleanest in certain sections, I think overall it gives it a really nice effect, like especially here on the neck where you can see a lot of the muscle membrane underneath. It looks really cool. And then we have probably what people have the biggest complaint about Shin Goji is his tiny little T-Rex arms. Which personally to me, I like them. Don't get me wrong. I think it's cool. It gives them a little bit more of a dinosaur feel. And to be honest, I think his arms are probably going to get bigger in the movie. Because the only real clue, at least on this figure anyways... Is that he has a large shoulder muscle right here. You can even see it on the side here too. But then his arms are really tiny. Kind of like literally like the T-Rex. Yeah, so I don't think they're fully developed. Like maybe they have to like grow over the course of the film. Because even looking at his hand, you see it in some of the promotional shots. He has three fingers and a thumb. But right there, you see what appears to be another finger starting to grow. So I or imagine, he lost it. or he lost it, which to me, I imagine that's probably going to come back and then the rest of the arm is going to probably form around it to kind of expand outwards. It's literally like how dinosaurs evolved. Yeah. So that's what I, I'm guessing. I'm not hundred percent, but it seems to be that way. And he also have his collarbone right here where it protrudes out of his body a little bit, which looks really awesome. Gives him that little crest right there at the front of his chest. And for his lower section here, you get a lot of nice wrinkles throughout his tummy on the sides of his hip. And then you can see here, Godzilla has a really huge freaking hips compared to his upper body. Which again, kind of gives me that feeling of he's going to be bulkier towards the end of the movie. But we'll have to wait and see. He has Chun-Li thighs. Oh yeah. She just starts kicking, just... <laughs> Moving back to his legs, also have a lot of nice details on him too, where I like that the skin's kind of folding around his knee right here. Looks really cool, and then he has some rounded scaling here for the top section of his knee pads. And then coming around the back where he has that more dinosaur-shaped foot, which also has a lot of things going on here, because he has his three toes, and then you got like the back little larger toe on the back here. But he also has like little protrusions on the side here that could be even more toes. Which is pretty strange looking, to be honest. Looks really cool, though. Got some copyright information on the bottom of his feet. Then for the nails on his feet, done in this very nice bone color, which uh, do bleed a little bit onto the feet, but overall still looks pretty nice. And then we'll move on to the tail, which is probably what I would say is the most iconic thing from Shingoji, other than the whole bacon appearance, is his stupid long tail, which I'm pretty sure is, in terms of size and body, the longest Godzilla tail we have ever gotten. And I really like, too, that it still holds a lot of the segmenting like you see in a lot of the older Godzillas and even the newer ones. Pretty much, it's very trademark Godzilla. But on the end of the tail here, you get that weird kind of deformed, burnt lava pattern on the back here. Which kind of looks like stuff's kind of fusing into his tail. Kind of looks like the marker from Dead Space. <laughs> yeah, you know what, sort of. And then you can see his dorsal spines starting to shrink towards the base of the, uh, towards the tip of the tail but it kind of elongates right here at the middle section and then coming back down is where you start seeing his more trademark dorsal spines which kind of again leads me to believe that this part isn't fully formed yet because you can see here that it's more of the standard it would come down and then taper off but right here it's starting to grow back so that's really really strange to me well overall looks pretty cool though like detail wise I'm pretty happy with it overall. I think it looks pretty good, especially for a smaller vinyl. I also want to point out too on this figure is I really love the shape of it. Because looking at it from its profile, I literally like how the tail actually kind of contorts into a few different directions. And you can especially see it looking from the back. It looks really cool. It gives them a really nice menacing appearance like you see from the movie. And then for his articulation, which is probably the more lacking part in this kaiju, his arms can go... <laughs> they move in and out, go all the way around is pretty much about it and his legs can go all the way around as well and then literally nothing has tail so you just have the leg and the hand articulation for this guy 
And for some quick comparisons, here we have the Bandai Shingoji compared next to some other Bandai vinyls with the Muto from Godzilla 2014 and Dagara from Rebirth of Mothra 2. And this is SH 2014 Spitfire Godzilla. And then our newly acquired SH Garuda from Mecha G2. Yep. The Heisei version. The Heisei version. <laughs> and here's some more SH Monster Arts and Ultra Act figures with SH Monster Arts Mega Godzilla 2 with Garuda on the back, because hmm, why not? And we also have the Ultra Act Ultraman Ginga, who also I just recently got at G Fest. And here's some of the more obscure Godzilla figures that we got from G Fest with my Ballmark M1. Yep. Mecha G1. Yep, the 1975 version. And we have the Vampire Robots exclusive Final Wars Burning Godzilla, who looks freaking gnarly and just as charcoal as this guy. Mm -hmm. So for the Shin Godzilla Bandai Vinyl, I actually think this one's pretty cool for the price tag, because usually online you see him for about $15, $20. At the convention, he was a little bit more money, but you're at a convention, of course it's going to be a little more money. But I think the details are actually pretty nice on this guy. The sculpt's really nice on this guy, and I'm just overall very impressed with this, especially for it being a smaller Bandai vinyl. It still actually takes up a lot of shelf space for this guy, which is pretty awesome. And well, for the size and the price, he's not too bad. I still think he looks like literally flowing lava. And for the first of the Shingoji line, I'd still get them. Yeah, because the only other option you really have is uh, there's the larger version of them, which I do believe is around 12 inches tall, which that would be a fairly large Shin Gojira. And then towards the end of the year, we're also getting the SH Monster Arts version, which is the one I'm actually really excited to be getting a hold of. But that'll be coming out a decent amount of time after the movie's already been released. So we already know all the little secrets that this guy contains. But if you guys are really looking for a Shingo Jira figure, definitely recommend picking up this little guy here. But what do you guys think? Have you guys picked up the Shingo Jira vinyl? Are you guys excited about the new movie or is 2014 just more your thing? Please let us know in the comments. We'll have a closer picture of this guy on Facebook. You want to click the link in the description below. And help us defeat those kaijus by hitting that like button. Subscribe, become a ranger today, and see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.